Worthy. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Lord, we love you this morning. We bless you today. We thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness in every area of our lives, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, for your presence and you've come with us. You said you'd never leave us or forsake us, Lord. And we are so thankful, Lord, that we have that promise that no matter what we're going through, where we're going through it, you're there with us, Lord, to lead us and to guide us, to keep us and to bless us. And for that, Lord, we give you all the praise and the thanks this morning. In Jesus' name, everybody said praise the Lord. Praise Amen. The Lord. Give him a hand clap. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Roberto. James, thank you, Peter. Thank you for double duty. Double down. Praise God. Praise the Lord. God is good. Amen. Well, it's uh, Memorial Day. Praise the Lord. Or it will be tomorrow. Some confusion as to what uh, Memorial Day is about, apparently. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. And it is about uh, our fallen uh, soldiers and sailors, Marines, all those that... Uh, have served and uh, gone on to be with the Lord or passed on anyway. And uh, so we're grateful for all of that. But at, traditionally in, in the United States, we've kind of made it about all of our deceased loved ones. So family, you know, you'll see Sally and I were out at the cemetery yesterday and a couple of cemeteries, in fact. And, uh, of course, again, it, initially it was all about the, the uh, veterans and those that have passed on. Uh, in combat, and, and uh, but also for all of our, we m remember them. This is a time that we make a special effort to go out and maybe put some flowers on a grave or, uh, you know, whatever it might be to uh, to remember them, to make a physical remembrance of them. Diane. I don't know if anyone else has been uh, out to the new cemetery. The new veteran cemetery? Yeah. yeah. It's beautiful. I've heard. I haven't been out there. Yeah. That's a great thing. Praise the Lord. So, Roberto, I hope that put to rest the uh... controversy. Yes. It's not a celebration of the dead. Yeah. It's about celebrating those that have served and amen all that they've done and what they mean to us. Amen as a people and uh, as individuals. So thank the Lord for that. Praise God. Amen. So, uh, been a lot of barbecuing. Good news is you can save charcoal. Just throw it on the grill. It's hot enough. I think you'll take care of it. Praise the Lord. I was thinking uh, yesterday, you know, you can't help but get nostalgic when you go to, or to uh, cemeteries. As Christians, it's one thing. It's not, it's not as depressing as it might be. It still kind of brings up some sadness and memories and so forth. But uh, I was thinking about the best thing about the good old days is that... Uh, I wasn't good and I wasn't old. <laughs> okay, well, to be frank, I'd have to change my name, so praise God. Amen. God is good. Amen. So I want to talk to you uh, in a kind of a probably odd way, but uh, about Memorial. Memorial Day. This is Memorial Day, right? So we'll talk about memorials. And I want to begin, uh, th this really isn't my text, but I just I want to just use some scriptures here to kind of get us into the context of what I want to talk to you about this morning. So, uh, Peter, if you would, go to 1 Peter, <coughs> appropriately, chapter 2 and verse 9. 1 Peter 2 and 9. And thank you all for being here this morning. I know this is a weekend, and obviously a lot of people are gone out of town. There are uh, different events, uh, boating and camping and a couple of them have gone uh, to uh, a wedding or no not a wedding a graduation we didn't have any grandkids graduating this year so I forgot all about it because every year we usually have at least two or three but for whatever reason there was a gap this year which will obviously be made up for next year two or three more again so first Peter 2 and 9 says you are a chosen generation 
a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of Him who has called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. Amen? 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 17. Praise the Lord. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So if anybody is in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. So you're not only human. You're also human. Are you with me? If you're not born again, you're only human. You're born again. You're not only human. You are also human. You are a spirit that just happened to have a body, amen, to get around in, amen. So you are also human as well as being a new creature, a new uh, divine spirit, amen, dwelling in a body. Praise the Lord. Colossians chapter 3, verse 10. So you put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Now, look at this scripture. So we are not only human, we are also human. We are spirit beings, amen, if we are in Christ, right? So we have put on the new man, that new man is Christ, which is renewed. So with the way we understand it, the way we keep that alive, is in the knowledge of the image of him that created him. Amen? The new man is renewed in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. That's how you put on the new man. Awareness, okay? Now, you do that by recognizing that the old man has been washed away. All right? 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 11. Such were some of you. Now, they've just given us a list of really bad behavior. Bad people. Amen. And he says, such were some of you, but you are washed. You are sanctified. You are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Okay? Now, we're talking about memorial. What is memorial? I happened to look it up in Webster's Dictionary just because I could. Amen. And here's what Webster says. The definition of memorial is serving to help people remember some person or event. Amen. Anything meant to help people remember some person or event as a monument, a trust fund, a statement of fact. All right? That's memorial. Well, Jesus is our memorial. Amen. He is the stone that the builders rejected. He's the rock of our salvation. And we have baptism in his name as a memorial to remind us of these realities. Praise the Lord. Now, look at, now we'll get into the text here. Romans chapter 7, verses 4 through 6. Romans 7, 4 through 6. Wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that you should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. For when we were in the flesh, the motions of sin which were by the law, did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. Now leave that there for a moment. We're talking about baptism here this morning, and I, I want us to get past the idea of just the physical act of baptism because it's an act of faith that we're involved in. I mean, you can dip anybody, and they go down a you know, dirty center, come up a clean center, all that kind of stuff that we've all heard in the past. The truth is we're putting faith in a person. Amen. It becomes a memorial kind of service. Amen. Because if you go back to the, the origins of baptism, it comes from the Hebrew mikvah. Now, one of the things that's interesting about the mikvah is that it's running water, and it always meant, for however it's used, any time that it's used, it always means that person has been cleansed. So they can either enter into the temple, they can go about their priestly duties, they can, uh, women uh, would have the mikvah uh, after uh, their after their monthly cycle, amen, to be cleansed so that they could go back into the society, you know, to interact with people and so on and so forth. And one of the more interesting parts of the mikvah is when a woman was going to be married, 
the last, one of the final things that they would do before the marriage is have this spiritual bath, this mikvah that would cleanse her and she'd become this new person that was going to be married. Amen. And it was always done by immersion. The old was washed away and now she's going to be married. She's going to become a new person, a one com uh, committed, amen, uh, to one person and that would make them uh, uh, in covenant. Amen. So in the New Testament, water baptism is identification with the person and the work of Jesus Christ. Amen. When a believer goes down in the water of baptism, what we're really saying is his death was my death. It's symbolic. And that's why Paul says baptism does not save anybody. It's our faith in what that represents that gives us salvation. It's just like uh, circumcision under the old covenant. It didn't make somebody a Jew or non-Jew. And that's why Jesus in the New Testament says well, circumcision doesn't mean anything. Or the, uh, I should say the Holy Spirit said it through Paul. The, Holy, the uh, circumcision or not circumcision doesn't mean anything. It's the faith in what that represented, a covenant with God. Amen? So, uh, when, a, when a, I'm dead to sin is what we're saying. His death was my death. Amen? I am dead to sin and alive now to God. But not only am I alive to God, I am dead to the law by the body of Christ. The law now has no effect on me. It has, I have nothing to do with the law anymore because Jesus fulfilled the law and His death paid the, the price for my inability to keep the law. So now I'm dead to the law. Amen? I am identifying with Him in His death. I was crucified with Christ, Paul said. I am buried with Him in baptism. And when I come up out of the water, I'm identifying with His resurrection. Praise the Lord. I am raised with Him in newness of life and am seated with Him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That is a spiritual reality that the, the act of baptism simply is a symbol of. It's a type. It's a shadow. It's a, it's, it's a metaphor for what our reality is in the spirit realm. Amen? It's a memorial. Praise the Lord. 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 2. And we're all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. It's talking about the children of Israel when they came out of Egypt. They were all baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Amen. Moses, now, here's the, the connection. Moses was the mediator of the old covenant. Amen. In the new covenant, we are baptized into Christ who is the mediator of a better covenant. Amen. The old is done away. We are now baptized into a better covenant in Christ. He's the mediator of that better covenant, right? All right. Now let's go to Joshua chapter 3, verses 15 and 16. Joshua 3, 15 and 16. And I'm saying this because over the last months, we've, I've been talking a lot about the Scripture being metaphorical, it being types and its shadows and, its, and all these things. And that's what all this is talking about. That's what all of this is. And see, religion makes it. I'm not saying, I baptize people. I've been baptized. I believe in baptism for the right reason. Not just to do it as a ritual, but so that that person understands really what's happening. That was the reason for baptism, was to change people's way of thinking. Amen. To understand that they are now one with Christ. They're, being, they're going to be married to Jesus. Amen. And so... There's a, there's a, a far deeper and, and more powerful truth that the Holy Spirit is trying to teach us, amen, spiritual to spiritual rather than just physical stuff. Just, and that's what religion does is end up just acting out all the ritual without ever really grasping or uh, obtaining the purpose for that or the, the reason behind it, amen. So and they... As they that bear the ark were coming to Jordan, and the feet of the priests that bear the ark were dipped in the brim of the water. Now remember, these are people that have been baptized into Moses, right? In the cloud and in the, in the sea. Amen? And now they're at the point where they're supposed to go into their inheritance. Into the promises of God. Right? They wouldn't have ever got to this place if they hadn't have already been through the other. 
If God hadn't have led them by the cloud, if God hadn't have parted the Red Sea, if they hadn't have been baptized in those areas, there wouldn't have been any way for them to get to here. Amen? And this was the point of that, was to get them here. Right? It wasn't just, you know, to have some miracle. It was to get them to the promised land. It was to get them to their inheritance. It was to get them to what God had promised them. All right? So they that bear the ark were come unto Jordan, and the feet of the priests that bear the ark were dipped in the brim of the water, for the Jordan overfloweth all his banks all the time of harvest. And the waters which came down from above stood and rose up upon a heap very far from the city of Adam. That is beside Zeratan. And those that came down toward the sea of the plain, even the salt sea, failed and were cut off, and the people passed over right against Jericho. So it's, it's not an accident that the waters of the Jordan are cut off, it says, back to the city called Adam. It's because the redemptive work of Jesus, amen, would cut off the flow of death, amen, that was coming from Adam, praise the Lord, and it would stop the hindering of God's people from entering into their inheritance. Praise the Lord. That's the metaphor, that's the reality that happened there, but it's also a metaphor of what God's trying to show us for us under the new covenant. Amen. Praise God. So, all right, now look, Joshua chapter 4, verses 5 and 7. Joshua said unto them, Pass over before the ark of the Lord your God into the midst of the Jordan, and take you up every man of you a stone upon his shoulder, according unto the number of the tribes of the children of Israel, that this may be a sign among you, that when your children ask their fathers in time to come, saying, What mean ye these stones? Amen. Then you shall answer them that the waters of the Jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord. When it passed over Jordan, the waters of Jordan were cut off, and these stones shall be for a memorial unto the children of Israel forever. Amen. A memorial. Praise God. All right. Matthew chapter 3, verses 7 through 11. And look at the, the, the correlation here. So in Matthew chapter uh, 3, beginning at verse 7, he says, But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, this is John, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth therefore fruits meet for repentance. And think not to say within yourselves, You have Abraham to uh, our father. For I say unto you that God is able to raise up these stones. Now he's in the Jordan. Praise the Lord. That's where he's baptizing. That's what these guys were crossing. And I think he's talking about the same stones. The 12 stones that they piled up as a memorial, amen, is what John's referring to here. Amen. So he says, Now also the axe is laid to the root of the tree. Therefore every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. I indeed baptize you with water under repentance. So John's baptism was a baptism of a mind shift or a mind changing. So he's, he's using this metaphor, using this memorial, amen, to show them what God was really trying to get them to. And so he's baptized, his baptism is to repent or to change the way you're looking at this whole picture here. You've made it all about ritual. You've made it all about legalism. You've made it all about religion. And God's trying to bring you something spiritual. Amen. So but he said, but he that cometh after me is mightier whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear, he shall baptize you with what? Spirit, amen. the Holy Ghost, and with fire. He said he could raise these stones up, this memorial, amen, and he's going to do something that is what all of this memorialized. He's going to be the reality of this. He's going to give you the spiritual fulfillment, amen, of all of these types and shadows that we've had leading up to this point. Can you say amen if you understand anything I'm saying? Praise God. Amen. So he's saying... This is a mikvah. Amen. All the years of the Hebrew having the mikvah, the washing away, he said, I'm, I'm going to show you what the mikvah really is. It's nothing but a memorial. It's a memorial, amen, that's pointing us to Jesus Christ. Amen. To the Messiah. To our Savior. To the end of a covenant and the beginning of a new covenant, a better covenant. Hallelujah. Now remember, he's dealing with Jews here. And that's why the scribes and the Pharisees were so aggravated because it was messing with their religion. It was changing what that religion was about. Amen? So God can, 
and will, basically, he's saying, save anybody. Amen. Praise the Lord. It doesn't have to just be a Jew. It doesn't have to just be this or that. He, can, he will, is willing to save anybody. And this is a memorial that he talked about in Joshua. When you see the priest bearing the ark, amen, Jesus is the high priest and the ark or the mercy seat of God. So he's, he's pointing them, he's showing them this symbol that they've had for centuries and actually for millennia. And he's saying, here's what it's really about. You need to change your mind. I'm going to baptize you. I'm going to give you this mikvah, amen, of, of uh, a change of mind so that you can have the mikvah of the Holy Spirit, amen, which prepares you for the marriage, amen, or the, the covenant, amen, with Jesus. I don't, praise God. I'm excited. I may not be making a lot of sense out of this, but I'm trying. Praise God. It excites me. Amen. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 1. Let us therefore fear, lest the promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. The, this is the Hebrews, the book of Hebrews. It's written to Hebrews. And he says, let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. The Jews were in fact at this time about to miss their opportunity again. Amen. They were about to miss their opportunity to enter into the kingdom of God, into his promised land called Christ. That's what he's talking to them about. Amen. The very word Hebrew is from a root word meaning to cross over. And this time, they weren't crossing over out of physical bondage. They were crossing over out of the bondage of law and legalism. They were crossing over out of the old covenant into the new covenant. Now, I'm saying all this because this is what grace is for. That's why we're here. That's why we're in the position we're in today because God's trying to show us for years, for centuries, the church has continued to mess with both of these things when he has tried to make it so clear to us that everything I've done has been about setting you free from that. And that was the struggle they were having then. And the, and the church literally is still having that struggle today. Let us fear. Lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest. Any of you should seem to come short of it. Praise the Lord. The book of Hebrews tells us the new covenant has better promises. Better blood. Better priesthood. Better tabernacle. Better sacrifices. Everything about it is better. More excellent, it says. The blood of bulls and goats. Do not say. You see, Jesus didn't die so you won't have to die. He died because you had to die. Praise the Lord. He died because you had to. He didn't die to, just to give you life. He died to give you a death. His death was your death. He didn't just die for you. He died as you. You were crucified with Christ. You and the firstborn Adam. Amen. That's your old man. He was put to death. Now you are in Christ. You're, you're in one Adam or the other. If you're on this planet, you're in one Adam or you're in the other Adam. The first Adam or the last Adam. You were in the first Adam, but the first Adam died in Christ when Christ died. And now you are raised a newness of life and you are in the second Adam, which is Jesus Christ. Amen. If you be in Christ, you're a new creature. Old Adam has passed away. Amen? Yeah. I'm in Adam. I'm not in Adam anymore. I'm in Christ. Praise the Lord. All right, look, just look at it this way. In Egypt, when they put blood on their doorpost, it didn't say to the angel of death, this house escapes judgment. That isn't what it said. What it said was there's already been a death here. You see what I'm saying? The blood represented something had died there. So it didn't say, this house escapes judgment. It says it's already been judged because there's already been a death at this house. Uh, that's good. Yes. Praise the Lord. That's us. Yes. 
The blood of Jesus has been shed. It doesn't mean we escape judgment. It just means judgment's already been rendered. The price has already been paid for this house. Amen? Look at 1 Corinthians 10 and 2 again. And we're all baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Okay, so Moses and Israel across in the Red Sea is a type of our identification with Jesus in death and baptism. All right, the picture of Jesus' redemption, they were delivered by the blood in Egypt. Then they were delivered by water at the Red Sea. They were blood-bought and water-baptized. Can I get an amen? Praise the Lord. All right. They, exactly 50 days later, after the children of Israel left Egypt, they came to the foot of Mount Sinai where God gave them the law. And I want you to notice in Hebrews 11, let's go there, verse 29. Hebrews 11 is the, is the book of faith. Amen. And so all the way from Hebrews 1 all the way up to verse 29, it's all these people, these Hebrews, operating by faith. Amen? It's showing that they believed God and God did stuff because of their faith in God. By faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, which the Egyptians, assaying to do, were drowned. So they, the, by faith, these, these Hebrews passed through the Red Sea just like it was dry ground, and the Egyptians trying to do that were drowned on the same spot. All right? So the story of faith stops there at the Red Sea. Amen? And for 40 years, nothing happens. So the faith of Israel doesn't start again until verse 30, which is 40 years later. Look at verse 30. 30 years or 40 years gap between that and that. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days. 40 years passed without faith. From verse 29 to verse 30. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell. And why? Because the law came and shut up faith. Up to verse 29, there was no law. Verse 29... They went through the Red Sea. Immediately, 50 days after that, they get the law. So for 40 years, there's no faith. Why? Because the law shuts up faith. Galatians 3.23. But before faith came, we were kept under the law. Shut up under the faith, which should afterwards be revealed. Now, it's important because if we're going to live by faith, we have to operate in grace because otherwise you are stuck with the law. There aren't any other options. And when you mix the law with it, it shuts up faith. And that's why we don't see the miracles. That's why we don't see the breakthroughs. That's why we don't see the healings. That's why we don't see things in a consistent way because we don't think consistently. We're double-minded. That's why this is so imperative that we understand it, and that's why God was showing it to us throughout the entire Bible, not just in the New Covenant. He was showing us what the New Covenant was to, to be by representation in the Old Covenant. Praise the Lord. So before faith came, they were kept under the law, shut up unto faith, unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. All right? Now let me, let me show you exactly why that is. Look at Deuteronomy 6 and verse 25. When the law was given, what did the people say? We can do this. Right? That was the first thing they said. We, we can do it. Amen? And here's the problem. They said, we can do it. And then if we do it, it'll be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God as He had commanded us. Praise the Lord. He said, this, you've got to do everything I said. Well, we, we can do it. We can do it. And then they said immediately after that, and if we do it, It'll be our righteousness that gets this blessing or the promise or whatever it is we're looking for, right? Amen? If we do it, it'll be our righteousness. It took them 40 years 
It took them 40 years, amen, to realize their righteousness was filthy rags. And it couldn't get them anywhere. But they believed that it could or they wouldn't have said it. That's the problem with self-righteousness. That's the problem with rule keeping and, and religion is it makes you feel like it's your righteousness that's getting you some kind of favor with God. And it took them 40 years to figure it out. It ain't true. It doesn't work that way. Your righteousness is filthy rags no matter how well you do it. It took them that long to realize you don't enter into God's promises by your works, by your righteousness. You enter them by faith in what God has done. Amen? Praise the Lord. The story of faith in Hebrews 11 turns back to the story of faith at the walls of Jericho. It stops right after the Red Sea, and then it turns back 40 years later at the walls of Jericho when God gave Jer uh, Joshua specific strategy for taking the city, right? What did he say? Get everybody going in the same direction with their mouth shut. Amen. That's kind of a... That's what he said, basically, right? Get everybody in agreement and shut up. Everybody working together with their mouth shut. That's probably the biggest miracle of the Old Testament. Yeah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Don't say a word till you hear the sound from the ram's horn. Right? That's what he told him. That's what God told him. And then, shout! Why keep silent? Why keep everybody quiet? Why, why keep their mouth shut? Because the purpose of the law was so that every mouth would be stopped and all would become guilty before God. Look at Romans 3, 19 and 20. There's no, I mean, everything in this word is God trying to get the truth to us. Trying to get us to hear with spiritual ears instead of with natural ears. Ears to hear, let them hear what the Spirit is saying. Not what the flesh says, not what religion says. Amen? That's why we were baptized with the Holy Ghost. Amen? You were baptized for a mind change, for a different way of looking at things so that when Jesus would come, there could become a baptism of the Spirit so that you could begin to then see and operate, amen, in agreement with God, who, by the way, is a Spirit. Amen. So now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. So he says, tell them all to shut up until they hear the blast from the ram's horn. Until they all realize, yeah. without God, nothing's going to happen here. Yeah. Praise the Lord. It took them 40 years to shut up and realize they couldn't do this through their own strength. They needed a Savior. Praise the Lord. The ram's horn becomes, where does it come from? It comes from the death of a male lamb. Amen. The moment you hear the message that comes from the death of the lamb, Jesus Christ, there will be a shout, amen, of victory that will cause whatever the walls are before you to come down. Praise the Lord. Shut up about the rules, amen, and hear the message of the lamb slain, amen, and there'll be a shout that will bring the walls down, a, a shout of faith, a shout of belief in what he has accomplished, amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Amen. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. Yes. Amen. I mean, can you hear it? Yes. This is why we keep basically preaching the same thing just in a different way over and over and over. Why? It's because by hearing and hearing and hearing the word, faith comes. Faith to just shut your mouth and wait for the message from the Lamb and then shout. See, we're repeating a lot of stuff that's killing us, that's keeping us from the promises because it makes sense naturally. But you are not just a human. Amen? You're also a human. You are a spirit. You are a new creation. Amen? 
And the reason for baptism and the reason for all of these things are memorials for us. To point us to Jesus. To point us to the one who sacrificed everything for us. Who paid the ultimate price for everybody. Can you hear it? Amen. Do you hear the sound? Amen. Of the ram's horn. The message of the finished work of the cross. Don't tell me why things won't work for you. Because I'll tell you, the moment you say that, I know why they won't work for you. You don't need an answer. You just gave it to me. I'm not trying to be cruel. I'm, I'm just saying, we, at some point, we've got to wake up and be who we are and stop trying to play this game of, you know, I'm a new creature, but I'm still acting like the old one. Well, we have a memorial, and the reason for that memorial is to say, that's dead. And you now have new life. And that new life is in Christ. And if you will listen to what the Spirit is saying and shut up with the law and with rules and with regulations and what demands are placed on you and then just listen, it is finished. And say, praise the Lord! The walls come down. You have to be consistent. See, I'm not saying there wasn't any faith for 40 years. I'm saying there was no consistent faith for 40 years. Because they were wavering back and forth. They'd say things, well, he did bring us through the Red Sea. I mean, that, that was amazing. And then they're whining because there's no water. He gives them water. And a week later, they're whining because there's no water again. He gives them food. And they get bored with the food. And then they want something else. So he gives them something else. He gives them quail. They were constantly complaining, basically saying, we can't trust you, Lord. And God had to get them to shut up because their own confession was destroying them. It was keeping them from the very thing that God had promised them all the way back at the Red Sea when they were baptized. And I'm telling you, it's a picture to me of so much of the church. We are baptized into Christ. Whether you went into water or didn't go into water isn't really the big issue. I believe in that, and I believe you should as a, as a symbol, as an uh, uh, identification with Christ. But even if you haven't, if you are a believer, you've been baptized into Christ, you have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Amen. That has to be your identity now. That has to be your conversation. You can't go back and say stuff that undermines everything that that accomplished. I'm not trying to be cruel. I'm just saying that's what the Bible says. I'm just repeating what it says. It's not my opinion. It's not me trying to be a jerk or to pick on somebody. I'm saying that will work because that's the way God planned it to work. Yes. Amen. Amen. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Right? It's what it said. John said, be baptized. The kingdom of heaven, Jesus said, be, the, the kingdom of heaven is near. It's, it's close. <laughs> Don't make the mistake that they made in not believing and therefore failing to enter in to His rest. Praise the Lord. Well, whew, I'm exhausted. <laughs> Happy Memorial Day. Amen. And in English, I'll say it again. Happy Memorial Day. Yes. Praise the Lord. When we think of these things, there, there, there's an identification with Jesus in everything that we do. And I'm not saying we have to be, you know, religiously nutty about it. I'm just saying He's always before us. He's always trying to reveal things to us. But if we don't approach it by the Spirit, we don't see three-fourths of it. Because we're trying to... Rid you know, ritualize it or, or religiousize it in some way when it's just He wants to lead us and guide us into all truth. And that truth is God loves you. He gave Himself for you so that you could have abundant life without fear, without anxiety, knowing that no matter what I'm facing, if I'll listen to the message of that slain lamb, there'll be a shout come up in me that says that wall's got to come down. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap this morning. God. Amen, amen. God bless all of you. I hope you enjoy the, the rest of your memorial weekend. Have a good time with family, friends, whoever you can be with. Enjoy it.
Enjoy it because God has given it to us freely to enjoy all things. Amen. God bless you. You are dismissed in Jesus' name.